rupture naturally. Right. In this scenario, there's not a whole lot that P is going to mess up. The mess up comes from when you're pointing this way and she's facing you mm -hmm. and the P sees all that light and goes, oh my God, that's too bright and goes under, right? right? It, it completely dials down for the light that's there to give you correct exposure based on the light behind her. Okay. What that does is make her face black. Right. There's nothing there, no detail. Right. That's when you override and go, you know what? Right about right here, this corner mm -hmm. of light, this carpet will give me an average meter reading. Now I want spot, okay. all the way in the dark. Sometimes if you know, like as the sun is starting to go down, there's going to be less glaring light from that window, and the difference isn't going to be as much, right? So then you can go, there's my spot metering. Okay. It's darker. See how dark that is compared to here? Yes. Compared to here? Yes. Right, okay. So, so then as, I would lock as in. As this gets darker, I want to go darker with the spot metering. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it needs to be, it, there's not enough difference in light between what's falling on her face and here where before when it was really bright, yeah. wow, all you needed was a small adjustment. Okay. That would have been too much. It would have been a halo around her. It would have been so bright, right? So now you're making a, a more of an adjustment because there's less light to, to, to work with. And I know this all sounds foreign to everybody. Once you see this thing in practice and you actually do it, it's, it's brilliant. Okay, so it's one of these things that you got to literally take your camera and practice. Do it at home with the kids, the dog, whoever you got, your wife, your girlfriend. Practice a scenario where this is great. And by the way, if you see her profile and she's standing in the window, this is awesome. If I shot, I would have shot this straight in P mode, straight on like that. Because what I would have is rim lighting that P would have picked up. It would have given me a little detail here. It would have kept this in the light that is there now without having to adjust for it. The difference is from here, because I see a profile, the nose is there, the lips, the chin, and if she's looking down and fixing something, someone is working on her thing from behind, he or she is also in profile, it's beautiful. But the minute this happens, it ain't going to happen, right? Not in P mode. So this now becomes... P mode, lock it somewhere, come back up. And again, the reason I say P mode and lock it somewhere is simply if you need to override because you know the camera isn't going to get this and know to overexpose for her so that we see the detail in her face by blowing that out in the background. The camera in P mode won't do that. Now you're in manual, and this is why people shoot manual, because they can control it. And I understand that. I totally understand it. I've just figured out a way to control it using P so that I'm hands off. I don't, I don't have to think about dialing in anything else after that. Can I share something that you yeah. Did? Over the break, I asked Joe, how do you know where to spot meter? Over the, during the break, I asked Joe, how do you know where to spot meter? And he said, practice. You just have to know the light, and eventually you'll just know exactly where to spot meter so that your exposure is dead on when you need to override P. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is that... Um, even if you're off a little bit, it's better being off one stop or a half a stop as you're practicing, because that's easy to dial in in post-production, than four or five stops. I mean, that's a lot of work, and then things start to get grainy because it gets pixelated and noise starts happening. So all you're trying to do, this will never be perfect. I'm never going to be perfect dead on 18% gray in my average metering or spot by what I select. But I'm going to get really close within a half a stop, because I've been doing it a while now. And a half a stop adjustment is nothing, okay? That's a quick little tweak. But again, it allows me freedom to let go and shoot anywhere else I need to. And then all of a sudden, if I'm back here, I pick, boom, back, lock, shoot. It's really fast for me. Instead of changing a dial that I have to change back rather than let go of a, a button, because I'm going to forget. And in, in, in the moments, I'm not going to be thinking, okay? So you're, you're dialed in again? Yeah, you're not busy. <laughs> I'm so, not busy. So, so check it out. We did one that was fairly good as she was looking. Right now, you, I say, let's say you want to blow that out a little bit because you want more exposure on a face in this scenario, and you're in P mode. Point at the carpet, pretty much the gray area down here. Avoid this little bit of light here altogether, but grab this right here and lock the meter from the back. Oops, not the front button, right. just the back. And you don't even have to keep your finger on the front. So all you got to do is you just turn it on by pressing half and then let go, and now lock the back. meter. Now uh -huh. come back up. Uh -huh. Now focus on her. 
and fire. Now take a look. Do you understand that you just overwrote, you, you just, it was an override on the program mode, right? Mm -hmm. And you added yeah. more light to your face if that's what you wanted. Right. So, and in essence, now I'm going to ask you to do this. Face me. Mm -hmm. And in the light right here. Yeah, right about there. You're coming on this side. Shoot in P mode, straight portrait of her. And incorporate the back window wall as much as you can. So back up if you have to so that you have, but go vertical. Vertical is fine. Okay. But include all that light behind, okay? And this is just straight P. Take a look at it. All right, she's a little dark, right? Yeah. I mean, it's not bad. P tried to figure it out, but it's not bad, but it's dark. Now lock in down here right in front of her. Keep a little bit of this light and this area right here and lock your meter with the back button. Come back up and fire. Now let's see. All right. Now what, do, do I keep? Yeah, you have I to keep, keep it. Yeah, you have to keep I, your finger yeah, on the button. Okay. So go down here, lock the meter, go all the way into the dark carpet, right? Because the light's not as bad now as it was earlier. Lock the meter, okay. come back up, keep your finger on it and fire on the front, you can focus. Now let's see. Hello. Oh, wow. You see how that worked? Yeah. Okay. That was just with the little button, right? Yeah. So now if all of a sudden dad walked in while you were doing this, now you would know after a while Where? without having to look, right. right? Just to keep that button pressed and keep shooting, you can walk around her and shoot because you're still going to have the same kind of light on her now that you have dialed in like having M. Okay. You're like in M mode having that button pressed. That's where you're at. Okay. You're M. Okay but you're actually in P. Okay. So now that door opens. Right. You know, look at the difference in light between that and what's there. You right. go, oh my God. You let go of the button, and now you're in P mode. Okay. And it's going to read exactly what's there. Okay. It's the same light in this corner. It's dark, but it's the same light. The, the P doesn't need to compensate for anything because it's even lighting. So it's going to nail it. Okay. Now, if you were an M, you couldn't do that. Right. Unless you were really fast on dialing in your f-stop and shutter speeds. But it, it takes, for me, that split-second difference in being able to just let go of a button or dialing something in is a world of difference in expressions. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. it, it is absolutely the moment between moments. Yeah? Yep. So that's what I do. So you, you might want to practice that. So what I want to suggest for you to do right now mm -hmm. is, so that was spot meeting, what you just did. Okay. If you want to do an average metering, take a slice of this. I'm looking at it now. And I'm looking at the value of yes. light that's on her face, and I'm saying, OK, we did spot, which was in here. Mm -hmm. Average is going to be a sliver of this light and the majority of that gray. Okay. So I want you to take a look, keeping in mind in the viewfinder, adding this little sliver of light. Just a sliver, though, not a whole lot. Lock the meter and come back up and shoot. Now let's see. Now that's I'm really dark. Yeah. All right. So. so so yeah, you got to stay keep on the dark side. Yeah, no, oh, no, no. You have in your viewfinder, in, in the viewfinder, all you should see is this corner of light, and the rest should be right here, right in front of me. Just the corner of light. Hello. That's not as bright, is it? No. That's average metering. So that's average metering. What you had before, that's program, that's spot. See the difference? Right? Yeah. Do you understand yeah, the, the idea? Average. That's average. average. And, but look how beautiful the light is, right? On both sides of her cheek. At the now, it's a little dark still, but if you dial it in before, mm -hmm. that one after, yeah. that's program. Right. No way will that work. I'm not going to attempt it in Photoshop. I could care less in light. No, I'm not going to. You know, yeah. that spot. Yeah. Notice what happened to the background. Blow it out. Yeah. The program P won't do that for you because it's going to ev evaluate the entire scene within the viewfinder and make adjustings accordingly to be average, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to look at the highlights. It's brilliant, that's the chip that's in there. It's going to say maybe that's too bright. We'll bring it down a little bit. But if you notice in P mode itself, it is a perfect exposure for outside, right? right? Yeah. That's not what we're after. Right. That's why most people will use spot, mm -hmm. put the spot on her face, change the meter setting, mm -hmm. spot her face, and then shoot it. But they're in M, right? Right. <coughs> they're controlling the shutter speed and f-stop. You can do it, too. And that was average, and that's spot. Mm -hmm. Got it? Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. 
And three, and this is fine. This should be pretty sharp. You're at 3.5. Is it 1.4 lens? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're beautiful lenses. Now, 1.8, I guess. It's 1.8. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, uh, that's the 85. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, if you don't want to spend a lot of money, the 1.2 lenses aren't cheap. A 1.4 for a few hundred bucks is brilliant. If that's where you want to start, that's what I would suggest first, is to get a lens that isn't quite as expensive. Because for the 1.2 glass, you're going to spend a couple of grand, $1,500, $2,000, somewhere in there. Uh, and, and maybe 700 is enough. And I, th I believe the 1.4s are around 700 bucks or so. Okay? And the 1.8s are even less than that. Um, but you're able to shoot with a 1.8 and a 1.4 at 2.5, 3.2 just fine. And they're going to be sharp. They're going to be sharp. They're not bad. They're not bad. I just like as much glass as possible, which allows for as much light in as possible. So when the scenario is the reception where there's only candlelight, I want as much light, and I need a big lens for that. I, I need a 1.2 lens for that. Okay, That's pretty much why I use them. They're, they're brilliant lenses. Um, what else do you want to do? You want to do some more? Would you like to use, you know what, the flash is for tomorrow. But I believe I also have one other student out there, if I'm not mistaken. But you, you, you have this? You want to yeah. practice this a little bit, or are you okay? I'm good. You're good? Okay, so go ahead and unplug, and we'll, we'll ask uh, the other student to come in real fast. Let me go do that while you guys hang for a second. Um, could I have the second student? Oh, sorry, I didn't know that you were hearing me. Okay, good. How are you doing? Awesome. Okay. Did you have any questions? about this right now? Or was this self-explanatory, I hope? Yeah. Pretty good? Yeah. All right, all right. The, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and Yeah, and the thing class. is, the thing is, <laughs> again, you know, I, and I, I can't emphasize this enough. It, anybody can do this. All of you can do this. It's just practice. You just have to practice it. It's, this is not really brain science at all. It is just so easy. The gear is that good today. I don't care what you're using, Nikon, Canon. It doesn't matter to me. It is that good that you can get away with doing the techniques I'm showing you. You have to understand it, though, why this is average metering, why this is spot metering, and why program will fail in this scenario and underexposing her. You have to understand that. And in essence, how you understand that is by shooting manual and controlling the light and the exposures, okay, or aperture priority, shutter priority, whatever it is that you want to do. All right. Uh, so at a wedding, typically P mode for me is about 80, 90 percent, and then manual is the other 10 or 20. Yeah. Manuals when you're using flash. Manuals when I'm using flash and I'm in the reception area uh, with my flash on. If I have my frezzy light on with the long lens, it's still in P mode, okay. even in a dark situation because I'm adding light now that's variable and I can control how much light I'm putting out there. So that's still P mode, but. Flash on camera, them walking down the church, and I'm needing to bounce. That's all M. That's all manual. I want to control all of it at that point. Jump in. Perfect. All right. So I guess we can actually, since you have flash on camera, maybe this is the technique we'll do with you in this doorway that the, I just tried to show. Do you want to do that? Or do you want sure. available light stuff using locking P? What do you, what do you, what I'm, do you want? I'm a manual shooter. You're a manual um, shooter. Ooh, I, I'm so going to have to try and convert her. I okay. know. Um, it makes me nervous if I don't shoot manual anything yeah. else because it's just the way my brain works now for yeah. a wedding. So yeah. I know what I need to shoot when and, and light. So for me in P mode, yeah. it's scary. Well, good. <laughs> but, That's um, what we're going to do right now. Yeah. So That's what we're going to do. What are you right. on, Canon? Yeah, I'm in Canon. Okay. Mm -hmm. So P mode. Okay. And you're on matrix or evaluative metering? Yes. Yes, you are. Okay, so check it out. Without flash on, right? Mm -hmm. Right, you actually no flash. Actually, take this sure. bad boy off. Here, I'll hand it. Thank Log you. It. Grab a shot of her straight in the window and go vertical on me. I want the whole window in it and see what P does for you. Because I know this is going to freak you out as an M shooter. So, okay. So <laughs> this, this is, is just step this one. Is, this so is step one. When I, if I'm focused on her eye, yeah. Um, do I even look at the meter? Because I'm so used to looking at the meter no. with getting the exposure do you dead understand? on. This is what I'm talking <laughs> I about. Know. You won't have to think once you've right. dialed this in. But okay. because you're an M shooter, you yeah. have an idea of light. 
and you have an idea where your right. meter is going to fall and you're used to looking at the meter. Mm -hmm. That's one less thing for you to have to look of at course, once you yeah. have this thing dialed in. And that's what I'm saying. That takes my attention away. I know it's split seconds, no, I think but it's every brilliant. split second yeah. helps me in, in nailing these moments. So mm -hmm. go ahead and just grab a okay. shot and pee because it's going to fail you right now. So do you, con sorry, do yeah. you control the, um, your aperture at all or do you? Not right now. Okay. I just want you to show and, okay. and compare. Okay. Okay, that should be really ugly. Yes. It's actually not bad. Well, it's actually it's not, not bad. my favorite. But it's in P mode, right? Yes, it is. Okay, mm -hmm. so watch now. So see how dark that was? Mm -hmm. Okay, now if you were to point down and say, look through the viewfinder. Okay. And just take in this area right mm -hmm. here and lock that back button. Is it? Yeah. Back button. Not, the, not that one, the second one over. That one is the back. Okay. That's the lock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, E lock. That's it. You locked it there, oh, come back up mm -hmm. and leave your finger on. Do I hold it yep, always? Yep. Okay. Yep, so you, you've locked it in, yeah. right? Come back up, lock it in down there, come back mm -hmm. up and shoot the same frame vertical. Right. Back, lock but I in. can move um, my focal no, point? Okay, so you, you've already lost it. Oh, okay, You cannot gotcha. let go of it. I can't the, move. No. Uh, okay. Right. You'll get used to it. I know that you're an M shooter. This is difficult for you. Now take a look at it. So with practice, mm. what you can do is eventually dial in exactly the lighting scenario you want, given P, like if you were using M. Eventually, with practice, it's going to mm -hmm. take a little bit. You might say, you know what, give me a slice of this right now and all this carpet. I want not as much overexposure on her skin. Right. And then you'll know. Okay, that's average metering. This was spot metering. Okay. There's a way to override it. So the reason, and the only reason, because M is brilliant. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. Because once you're dialed in M here, you can shoot all day long, right? Yeah. But my suggestion is, even if you have this completely done this way, mm -hmm. and let's say the lighting scenario is such that we had earlier light that was really bright. Right. And dad walks in over there, and there's a five-stop difference. And you're not fast enough to mm -hmm. dial in five stops really quickly, one way or the Which other. Is, yeah. Letting go of a little button and yeah. firing is so fast. Because so you're you, always continuously holding on. Until I let go of it. Until you let go. And then I select something else. So if okay, I so move meter, myself and I go lock shoot, somewhere. Yeah. Meter, shoot, yeah. meter, shoot. Or, or okay. meter, shoot, 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 shoot. He right. comes in, let and go, then, boom. Meter, shoot, shoot, ah, shoot. I change, I change, and, and it's, not, it, it's become... Second so nature. you know what to meter with in accordance to which light is coming in or where you yeah. need to be. In. I'm okay. doing a scene selection based on the light that I see in that little scene as to average metering, right. spot metering, mm -hmm. given the light that's coming through that window mm -hmm. right now. So while I look at this, I go, you know what? Right here, right now on her face is average. This now will be spot. Okay. Sometimes I have a 70 to 200. Yeah. I zoom in on a dark area. If the dark area needs to be spot, lock in, zoom back out, and then focus, fire. Ah, OK. You, you, you get? I'm getting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting it. Good, good, good. I know it. this is hard for an M shooter. And, I know, you know, I know. I love That's shooting right. an M because you can control everything. I'm just saying, if I had my bride alone, OK, if my bride was all alone in here, and the, the instructions were, no one comes in the room, I'd be an M. Do you understand? I'd be an M because I can keep the same value consistent, right? And so that later in post, I really don't have to tweak anything. All the images are going to look the same mm -hmm. because I've controlled it. That said, I'm usually in a photojournalistic mode where things happen. There is no rule, door stays closed. I don't hear that from the bride. So all of a sudden, dad just walks in. Honey, okay, I, I have to be ready for that, and I can't be an M. That's all. So, because your main, your primary shooter is focus, um, is shooting, say, the formals of the day. Yeah. Um, he or he's an she M. is always an M because he's, an M. he's doing. He's, he's doing an the M. He's just got that one doing, thing. He doesn't yeah, yeah. worry about any moments that are happening to right. him. I've got to cover a little bit of that, but mostly I've got to cover the moments that unfold in front of me, and I need to be. No, I liked how you were front on, but just, just, yeah, this one just let's see. See, that's dark, right. so I spot so that, metered So now that. meter down below, and I do the same thing, and meter right about right there. Lock it, come back up and shoot. 
Now what? Now it's overexposed. Right. So the value that you have to look at, that you're trying to get. I like it. No, it's not I bad. Mean, it's just, I it's mean, not it's bad. too bright. But yeah. So what I said earlier, by the way, is if I'm a half a stop to stop off, yeah. easier fix than four or five stops. Right? right. Because no. the minute you have to try and fix that, it starts, you know, disintegrating on you. So mm -hmm. I don't want pixelated images. I don't want noise. I try to avoid that. So oh, a tweak of oh, a half. I'm not going right. to be accurate doing this. Mm -hmm. And I'm, like I said, I'm still practicing it. But this gives you a feel. You went right here for spot. That was mm -hmm. spot and a little more, probably. That's, that's actually pretty darn close to spot. But maybe it's here. Right. So if you point now and have a sliver of this light in the viewfinder, uh -huh. just a sliver, and mostly here, I guarantee you you're closer to the exposure that you're looking for. I'm, I'm, I'm gathering I know what you want to do. Three, two. And now shoot the same thing. Hip. Hip knee. Good. That's a bit better. I yeah. actually kind of liked that one a bit better. Actually. That's it's more how romantic I like it. Yep. for me. Um, yep. Question, you said... Um, you oh. like less noise, and you shoot um, with uh, S raw. You don't yeah. shoot I use small raw, raw. so you use small raw. Yeah. Um, do you find that in low light situations, your noise level is increasing, especially for a reception with just a 10 megapixel um, photo, opposed to, say, your 21 megapixel There's photo. a difference between the two, for sure. But for me, post-processing... 4,000 images at 21 of... megs is nuts I for know. me. It's just so much work and so much storage. Yeah. And frankly speaking, most of my clients, mm -hmm. here's something about high-end clients. What do you think is the largest print a high-end client will buy from me? Do you, show them, do you show them 11 I showed by them 14, the 11 by so, 14 yeah. man it to 16 by 20. Mm -hmm. It's an 11 by 14. That's the largest print. Mm -hmm. Rarely do they buy a mural size print. Now, back in the day, when mm -hmm. I was shooting not the high-end client, but the, say, middle of the market, right? They afforded three, $4,000 to do a wedding. They wanted 30 by 40s on the wall. Interesting, isn't it? Mm. Because what do you think a high-end client puts on their wall? Art, thank you. Art, real art, okay? Where's my 11 by 14 or 8 by 10 go? On the piano. Mm -hmm. On the piano. It's with the family shots. Okay, maybe in the hallway, that 11 by 14 man up to 16 by 20, mm -hmm. beautiful, okay? But most of their home is covered in original art, Picassos, whatever right. it might be. That's right. what they put on the wall. When I was in the middle market, it was their mural of them, you know, with everybody jumping with Scott right. the dog, right? Right. That's what they want, and, 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 and rightly so. I mean, that's, this is what they want. They can have it, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I just found, as my market changed, the mentality about photography changed. Mm -hmm. It was, as I got higher...